The things we see and touch are changing. If not from one day to the next, or year to year, then from decade to decade. Consider the airplanes that are transporting an increasing number of passengers all over the world. Since the birth of flying, we've become accustomed to seeing airplanes that seem quite similar. Although much has changed in aviation technology, the fundamental fixed-wing architecture has remained the same. The concept of a blended wing has been attempted for decades with little commercial success. But as manufacturers and airlines strive for more sustainability, will a new plane emerge in the future? This and other topics will be covered in the video. The first successful powered flight occurred in December of 1903. The Wright brothers piloted the world's first powered aircraft. The first effort was in 1903 and it was simple. The plane barely traveled 37 meters and lingered in the air for 12 seconds. The Wright brothers persevered and by 1905 their third aircraft, the Wright Flyer III, was capable of longer, more controlled flight. In 1905, the longest test flight lasted 39 minutes and traveled over 38 kilometers with bigger fuel tanks and engine coolant added to allow for longer operation. Following these successful flights, the brothers dismantled the plane to prevent competitive Editors from replicating it. It didn't fly again until 1908 when the brothers obtained contracts in America and France. It was adapted to carry a passenger this time. In May of 1908, mechanic Charles Fernas became the world's first flying passenger. However, the first passenger service did not begin until 1914. The St. Petersburg-Tampa airboat line began operations between St. Petersburg and Tampa across Tampa Bay in Florida in January of that year. This 20-minute flight was a historic milestone that marked the beginning of commercial flying. The introduction of the jet engine was the next significant advancement in airplane design. Jet engine development began in the 1930s and the first operational jet aircraft was the German Heinkel HE-178 in 1939, followed by the Messerschmitt ME-262, which saw military duty in Germany beginning in 1947. In 1947, Boeing debuted the jet-powered B-47 for military usage in the United Kingdom. The de Havilland Comet, which entered service in 1952, was the first passenger jet aircraft. It was a tremendous advancement in aviation. The Boeing 707 is a recent type of airplane that you may be more familiar with. The Comet had various successors and competitors, including the DC-8, Vickers VC-10, Tupolev Tu-104, and Boeing 707. These were all amazing planes in their own right, but the 707 was the most successful. Boeing expanded on its prior military achievements with the 707. It was designed to be a military tanker aircraft and utilized the same Pratt & Whitney turbojet engines as the B-52 Stratofortress. While it was not the first commercial jet aircraft, it was the first to be widely successful and it is often regarded as the beginning of the jet age. Many design components were included by Boeing based on difficulties with previous jet aircraft and customer input changes to the flap design and strengthening of the fuselage. Following the success of the 707 and 727, Boeing created a new aircraft, the 737, to outperform the competition and acquire customers. The 737 has been with us since 1967, evolving through several variations. Each of them has provided upgrades to match the interests and wants of airlines. However, the foundational design, fuselage, construction, and wing design, for example, have remained mostly unchanged. Do some claim why alter what is currently functioning when you can improve it? But what if we told you that there is something that has the potential to revolutionize the airline industry? which leads us back to the blended wing design. We've become accustomed to airplanes that appear quite similar since the Boeing. Although much has changed in aviation technology, the basic fixed wing design has not. The blended wing is not a new thing. Since before World War II, Germany, the Soviet Union, the United Kingdom, and the United States have all been experimenting with it. In military applications, the blended wing improved efficiency as well as radar detection. The fundamental concept for a blended wing body was created decades ago, and versions of it have been utilized in the well-known B-2 bomber, a blended wing, and the lesser-known YB-49, a pure flying wing from the 1940s. The blended wing body design, like the the B-2 employs composite materials that are stronger and lighter than standard metal construction. 
The blended wing body, like the B2, has many control surfaces on the trailing edge instead of the standard tail assembly. The blended wing, on the other hand, is not like any fixed wing design. A blended wing airplane lacks a distinct fuselage and instead combines the wing and fuselage into a single structure. The lift necessary for flying is then provided by the entire aircraft. This explains why it's also known as a flying wing. The additional fuselage space may then be used to transport load, which might include fuel, avionics, cargo, or people. For instance, the Su-27 was a massive air superiority fighter powered by two enormous, inefficient engines, necessitating large fuel tanks. The benefit given by the blending idea allowed the Su-27 to have a stated range of 4,000 kilometers. There was also a desire to adapt it for passenger usage. The AW-52 was designed by British firm Armstrong Whitworth with two prototypes flying. However, studies did not result in manufacturing the aircraft. However, NASA is investigating the BWB's flight characteristics. Because it is a configuration that has only been used in military operations, researchers must answer a number of crucial problems before a BWB can be commercially approved. The principal aims of the research are to investigate the flight and handling characteristics of the BWB design, to compare the vehicle's performance to engineering forecasts based on computer and wind tunnel studies, and to create and test digital flight controls. So this adds to the research for the blended wing body. Before we get to the benefits, let's take a look at some of the drawbacks. Several challenges hampered the advancement of blended wing aircraft. A blended wing is frequently offered as the most efficient aircraft design in terms of drag. It is considerably lighter than a standard fixed wing design, which improves efficiency even more. It has poor flying and handling characteristics as a result of its relaxed stability, low control authority, and complicated flight control system. Due to taxiway and runway width constraints, gate limits, and powerful wake vortices, it also has certain limitations on large size BWB. This may not seem significant to mention, but it degraded comfort owing to the windowless cabin. Now we go through the benefits. The additional fuselage room is one of the benefits of the blended wing design. This is especially important now, as airlines and businesses ponder switching to hydrogen as a fuel source in the future. One of the disadvantages of hydrogen fuel is the increased storage capacity required, particularly for long-distance flights. The BWB reduces lift-induced drag caused by the lifting body and improves spanwise lift distribution. The configuration's simplicity implies a decrease in part count and, as a result, a reduction in manufacturing costs. So, what are the current plans for blended wings, you may wonder? Just recently in 2020, Airbus revealed a future blended wing commercial aircraft design that claims to lower fuel consumption by up to 20% after a series of secret tests. Airbus is the first major manufacturer to disclose plans for a future blended wing design. It debuted its design at the Singapore Air Show, accompanied by a 3-meter wide prototype aircraft that flew in 2019. Another similar concept comes from KLM, which is collaborating on a Flying V project with the Delft University of Technology. This aircraft is delta-shaped, having passenger cabins on either side. So what can we anticipate from the BWB planes? To argue that the age of the flying cylinder may be coming to an end would be an understatement, as Airbus introduced Maverick, a blended wing demonstrator. The most significant benefit of both planes would be the reduction in the carbon footprint of airline operations through improved fuel economy and increased passenger capacity. And, as we all know, it consumes 20% less fuel than a modern single-aisle cylinder and wing plane. While the model is still being analyzed, Airbus's aircraft interior design team is already contemplating what the passenger experience on board a blended wing aircraft may be like, as shown in the Airbus depiction of the Maverick cabin interior. While it has been speculated whether the blended wing airplane will have genuine windows or virtual windows with visuals projected from the outside, the concept rendering suggests that real aircraft windows are still a possibility. It is possible to use virtual windows to display visuals from the outside world. This notion is indeed futuristic and fantastic at the same time, but we want to hear what you think about it, whether you think it's worth it or not, and any other views you might have. Please share them in the comment area down below.